When I started learning demoscopy, everything was confusing. There was just too much new jargon and new information thrown at me. Even worse, as I looked down my dermoscope at skin lesions, my confusion only seemed to increase. It got so bad, I even gave up dermoscopy for six months. What helped me clear my mental logjam was developing this dermoscopic hack I'm going to share with you today. Let me illustrate how this hack works. Which one of these is the horse? Not a trick question, point it out. How do you know that? They are both roughly the same size. Both have ears and a long tail. Both have four slim long legs with hooves at the end. You might answer, they're different colours. Black and white is typical for a cow. And horses are often a nice chestnut colour. You might even have noticed the small horns on this cow, which aren't a feature of any horses. Well, not ones I know of anyway. Subtle clues you learnt as a child, helping you make the correct diagnosis. Using the power of association, this hack can use the knowledge you already have about animals and their behaviours and link them to different skin lesions to help you make sense out of the chaos. Here's one of my grandsons with a table full of creatures and I've just asked him to find the horse. This was his answer. He has a car fetish at the moment so perhaps he's not quite ready for demoscopy. Maybe one day. In general practice common things occur, well, Commonly. This hack covers 95% of skin lesions you will see, including some important rare ones not to miss. Why don't we play a game? Let's see how many of these animals you can associate with a type of skin lesion before I reveal the answer. Here's your current potential score. There's 15 points on offer, and at the end, I will give you feedback on your performance. As a young GP, I spent two years working in a mission hospital in Malawi, East Africa. Malawi has a few game parks, and we went on a couple of safari holidays, hoping to see some lions in the wild. Not once did we see any. Look at this sleeping lion. What do you notice? The irregular border, the asymmetry of his picture, and more than two colors. The king of the jungle, when found sleeping like this, can appear cute, even cuddly and non-threatening. However, when he rises up and sinks his his teeth into your skin, his life-threatening potential is revealed. What skin lesion do you think this represents? If you said melanoma, you get a point. If you said a superficial spreading melanoma, then you get a bonus point. There are four types of melanoma you need to be able to recognise. The majority of melanomas are of this superficial spreading type. They start in a sleeping state, in situ within the epidermis, with a radial growing phase. The ABC rules you may have been taught will help you recognise them. At this radial stage, it should be flat and not risen up. Removal of it at this stage will save your patient's life. However, the more it rises up, called the vertical growth phase, the deeper it can sink into your skin and the worse your chances of survival. Of course, there are other types of big cat, each with their own preferred location and behavior. Black panthers are tree climbing big cats, being creatures mainly of the forest. You will have little time to escape as it drops on you from the tree, full of fury and sharp teeth and claws. What is it? It represents a nodular melanoma. Usually they are black in colour. They have no radial or horizontal sleepy growth phase and therefore don't always tick the ABCD boxes. To make matters worse, some nodular melanomas are so abnormal they stop producing melanin and are therefore pink. Pink panthers, while super rare, are rightly to be feared. There are many benign non-cancer causes of a growing pink papule and its true nature can often be overlooked until it's too late. The snow leopard is a big cat that's found in remote cold locations. It's a big cat that doesn't see much ultraviolet light compared to the other big cats. What is it? Acral melanomas. Acral means peripheral body part, i.e. hands and feet, fingers and toes, or cold regions of the body. What's interesting about acral melanomas is they are just as common in people with skin of colour as those with white skin. The reason is that acral melanomas aren't associated with ultraviolet light the way the other melanomas are, and while rare, are equally common in all skin groups. Bob Marley, for instance, the musician, died of an acral melanoma. Ah, the tiger. It loves stretching out in the sun and it tends to take its time about things. A big cat for sure, but one that loves basking in very sunny regions. What is it? It's a lentigo malignant melanoma. You need all three words to score a point. That's a bit of a mouthful and it took me a while to understand all those words. Let me explain. A lentigo is an ultraviolet light induced freckle caused by increased of skin melanin production by the melanocytes. It's common and they're not cancer. Lentigo maligna is where those cells become abnormal, but most crucially, they haven't spread and still remain within the top layer or the epidermis of the skin. They are an in situ melanoma, but they have the potential to become invasive and sink their teeth into you. When that starts, they are now called Lentigo maligna melanoma, a proper big cat. Is this a big cat? No, it's a pussy cat. I'm a dog fan myself, being very allergic to cats. 
I once did a home visit on a lady and suddenly I started wheezing and struggling for breath for no good reason. Do you have cats? I asked, not seeing any around her living room. Yes, I have nine, she replied. It was the shortest home visit ever. The next week, she phoned for another visit. The receptionist who took the call told me she said, it could be any doctor, but not the one I nearly killed last week. Cats come in all sorts of patterns. Pussy cats aren't going to kill you, other than if you're allergic to them. Although they are related to big cats, both being in the same family and class. What is it? You get a point if you put a benign nevus or a mole. There are many benign patterns of nevi, just as there are colours within pussy cats. A key thing to remember is that it's their behaviour that tells you if it's a pussy cat or a big cat. One will eat you quite happily, the other not so much. Learning to differentiate a big cat from a pussy cat is a key skill you'll grow in as a primary care demoscopist. When working in Africa, I once had one of these drop out of a tree, just missing me as it landed at my feet. It scared me to death. Scaly, unfortunately not in the least harmful, it's a chameleon. Subspecies vary in size from two inches to two foot in length and are slow moving, renowned for their ability to change colour. This enables them to blend into their background and be mistaken for something else. What is it? Seborrheic keratoses, like chameleons, have ability to change colour and shape and often are mistaken by patients and some doctors for moles and other skin lesions, such as a wart, squamous cell cancer, or even a big cat. But unless you learn to recognise them using a dermoscope, many are sent to secondary care as possible cancers due to their colour and shape shifting nature. I love my garden, a common sight being ladybirds. Sometimes just one or two, but sometimes they seem to come in swarms. They're usually red, but they do come in other colours, in particular black and sometimes even blue. What is it? Capillary hemangiomas. Very common, not dangerous, and can safely be ignored. However, when black in colour, they can confuse you into thinking they are nodular melanomas, and a dermoscope reveals their true nature. I've also seen a couple that are very blue in colour and looking like a blue nevus. On removal, their true benign nature being revealed. Hippopotami start small and slowly grow. They can get very big. Often pink in colour, they can kill you, but are vegetarian and prefer grazing. When they're fully raised out of the water, their full bulk can be seen and they're much easier easy to identify. Sometimes, however, they're only visible through ripples on the surface being submerged in the water, or just their nostrils are visible. What is it? It's the basal cell cancer. This association suggested itself to me when this lady presented to me with this pink nodule on her upper chest. There's an eye, the back of the hippo, as if rising up out of the water. It had been slowly growing for two years and had become too big to ignore. 80% of BCCs are of the nodular variety like this. 20% are superficial and only subtle signs on the water, I mean skin, surface, give the clue of this being a BCC. A dermoscope is a fantastic way to identify these when you know what you're looking for. In a practice of 10,000 patients, you'd expect around 28 a year to present with a BCC. I have a small pond in my garden with a ladder to help frogs get in and out. One spring, I'm hoping to see some of these frog spawn. Inside, there's a little wriggling tadpole just asking to be let out. What is it? Warts. On dermoscopy, you get the frog spawn pattern with a central looped vessel or dot surrounded by white keratin. If you see this pattern throughout a lesion, then you can be sure it's a wart or a seborrheic keratosis. Popcorn. Okay, this isn't an animal, I know that, but they're great for movies, and some movies have animals in them, right? It's a great way to think about another skin lesion you will see, and more often than not, the patient isn't even aware they have them. You pop popcorn in your mouth, which is located on your head and neck, just in case you weren't aware of that. What is it? It's sebaceous gland hyperplasia. On dermoscopy, you often see these popcorn-like swollen glands. I don't think I've ever seen one that hasn't been on the face or neck, and they are a cosmetic nuisance. But if large enough, they can fool you into thinking it's a BCC, unless you know your dermoscopy. In Africa, we had lots of these Anopheles mosquitoes, capable of transmitting falciparum malariae. Only the females bite and use your blood to grow her eggs. They fly into your home in the daytime, and like vampires, bite from dusk to dawn. They find you by following the raised carbon dioxide gradient in the air around you from your breath. They bite exposed skin, which is usually an arm or a leg. What is it? It's a dermatofibroma or histiocytoma. It's a small hard fibrotic scar, usually from a small skin trauma, such as an insect bite or a thorn puncture. Dermoscopy can be super useful to helping you recognise these. And finally, what have we missed? Ah yes, crocs. Scaly critters with many teeth. They come in small, medium and large. The large ones are people eaters. What are they? 
Three points available, actinokeratosis, Bowen's and squamous cell cancer. And it's the big ones you need to watch out for. So the all important question, how did you do? If you got between 10 and 15, I hope you found this hack fun and interesting, but you seem to know your stuff pretty well already. If you scored between five and 10, then you either found my animal associations too odd or you need to keep working on your skin lesion recognition. If you scored less than five, you're probably new to dermoscopy and skin lesions. So keep watching my videos and keep learning, and ideally looking at the odd patient or two. Why not try one of these two videos to help you on your journey?